the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. What did that come from? What's the purpose of deliverance? Where did that come from? That come from God. Yeah. And when they're going to stop lying. And I'm saying, when that person gets saved, right. whatever knowledge that exists in his conscience regarding God and what is accepted and unacceptable, you can guarantee that the Spirit of God is going to convict him on that. Yeah, but what about the deliverance from those strongholds? Well, how, long take, how long does it take to be delivered? He's going to repent. And those things are going to be, those things are dead within the repentant process. The moment he acknowledges and confesses that it's wrong, the Spirit of God deals with it. You know, you know, we talked about, you know, I used to have a, a scenario. I don't know if you, 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 I think you came a little later. We were talking about repentance. Repentance is 180 degrees turn. And, and Elder, this is kind of fit your, your scenario that I was talking about is when I, when I used to demonstrate that, Bishop, I said, repent is 180 degree turn away from sin away from death to life. And I said, when the person repent and they, they take that 180 degrees turn, they're now facing life toward heading toward Christ. But I asked them, I said, if they drink two or three bottles of liquor a day at the day of repentance, I asked the question is, how many bottles of liquor are drinking at the day of repentance? And, and the question, the answer is always going to be they're still drinking three liquors to bottles a day because they just turned the wrong direction, now the right direction, but they have to move toward Christ to be delivered from those issues. That's because not scripture. If, 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 as you that's move not, toward that's Christ, not that's not scripture. Repentance means 180 degrees turn. That's all it means. That's, that's not scripture, though. No. I, I, think, uh, I, I remember once you talked about. Uh, I'm telling, you, I'm telling you what you just described to me. When you, That's not scripture. So, so, so you see a lot of people. What's, I'm supposed to say, Ellen, so, so you see a lot of people when they repent, they actually stop. If they were like an alcoholic for three bottles of liquor a day, they're an alcoholic. The day of repentance is the day they stop drinking all those three bottles of liquor a day. They go cold turkey. You, you make that. You make that sound like that's something impossible. No, I'm not saying it's not impossible. Because it is possible. You seem, you seem to I, be giving connotation that that, I, that 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 doesn't happen. No, what I'm getting the connotation is on the average, that now, does not. On the average, what you might find to realize is, is that it's, it's exactly what Paul Washer told us. If you listen to Paul Washer preaching to them about the gospel in this country, Paul Washer tells us that what we're doing in America is making false converts. <laughs> hey, let's hey, let's do this. Because it's gonna be a long conversation. We are ready in twelve nineteen. All I'm saying is that all I'm saying is I would never, ever take a situation like that lightly. I, I want. I, I, agree understand, with that. I understand the bodily consequences to making a move along those lines yeah. when I'm looking at scripture yeah. that tells us to be holy. And yes, yeah, holy. It said be holy, right? I just got to talk about when. Now, this ain't this ain't a life. You're talking about stuff that you don't know. This ain't like you touch. Listen, you know this. I knew this before I came into the body of Christ. I knew I knew fornication was wrong. I didn't care. But when I got saved, the Spirit of God dealt with that thing, and it didn't take him no. <laughs> he dealt with that thing. That thing stopped. What is the, uh, I guess the question we may want to do is, uh, if you don't mind, next week of dealing with repentance, but in the, the, the scripture that goes with salvation, there's a couple of them, and that's why I have, I've been confronted by, by this many times. First, like even the one you just read, John 3, 16, it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth, not whosoever repentance, whosoever believeth, in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, John Romans 10 9 10 said, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's not, it's talking about the believing is to salvation because that 10 says, With the mouth, 
one confess to salvation with the heart one believes into uh, deliverance. I, I can't, I'm quoting that wrong, but I'll get it next time. And then the other one saying to say, he'll cause the name of the Lord shall be saved. The, the point where I guess believers and people listening to this, and I like to think we should talk about it next week, is repentance the condition of salvation or believing is the condition of salvation. And then with believing, could that person be delivered from the different areas that they need strongholds in? Because those are strongholds. I think being an alcoholic is a stronghold. I think homosexuality is a stronghold. I think lying is a stronghold. Racism and hate is a stronghold. Unforgiveness is a stronghold. Those are things that the body of Christ is dealing with internally today. Yep. And either we got a whole bunch of false converts or we got people that's going to a hospital to be healed yeah. Bishop, that's what they but i think bishop i think we should use so how about this do you want to take which should we use uh either john 3 16 and 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 say let's do a cti on that uh we can do 16 from uh 17. huh problem it's gonna be hard for you to even find the scripture that even has that as the substance. Well, we, we talked about the fact is, is it believing and repentance? We, we can find one. Let's, let's, let's look for one uh, between now and, and, and tomorrow that deals with believing and repentance. Or the cut, because the question is, when Elder came into the world, into the Christ, it took him how many years that elder? Ten years? Six. Six. Six years. Just to be delivered from his stronghold. Okay, so so what you what I have to ask you is so you see, see, we've already judged and made the decision about some things. When we were in a place before we didn't have no knowledge, we didn't have no truth about how God actually works. And yet now when light comes, we still hold that same thing. Maybe what happened to you. But maybe that God was dealing with you to get you to the place where you could get saved. You see, but see, back then we didn't have we we, we had some jacked up stuff we were believing. Uh-huh. Jacked up doctrine we believe in. Yeah. People who come down the aisle and give their hand to the pastor and, and nothing is said about salvation. And then they can talk about they member of the church. Yeah, doors of the church is open. I'm like, I'm like. And, and, and so these people walk around and not talking about they were saved. I'm like, you a lie, you were never saved. How you gonna be saved that nobody ain't nobody ain't share Jesus with you? Hey, hey, ain't you no plan of salvation. How were you saved? Hey, look. Hmm. Uh, how many, but you know, a lot of things been talking about it said what John what what uh and uh Good Matthew Lord. he said he said uh uh let's say get you'll know, get baptized in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh they is that what it's, that's what they're supposed to do? They're supposed to, uh, what is that, Matthews or Mark? But I think Matthews. I you, a lot of this stuff, we've held on to a lot of this stuff, and I'm thankful that God has given me a chance now that I'm retired to go back and take a very C, serious, D look at these things. Well, and, I'm finding, and I'm finding that most of that stuff, I hate to say it, is jacked up. Well, that, that's a good point. I think we should use that for next discussion. Let me see here. He said uh, in Matthews, because <laughs> I mean, people just going by the, the scriptures. The scriptures say you be saved if you if you confess your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. John three sixteen. You said you believe. So okay, let me say something. Let me show you something about that. Okay, show me in scripture where anybody who said the plan of salvation with anybody told them what to say in prayer. <laughs> repeat, repeat this prayer after me. Right, they, I'm most of them. Show me the scripture where anybody ever did that. What? What, what you saying? What you telling me? The job. I, I'm just saying the, the gospel is being preached all over the place in scripture. Right. Show me one place where the man finished preaching the gospel. He said, "Okay, repeat this prayer after me." Right, but the, the scripture did say in Romans 10 and 10 that if you confess in your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is telling you, it's telling you what salvation is. He said, but you confess with your mouth. That's that's what's in uh Romans. It, uh, that, that don't say, okay, say this, Lord Jesus, <laughs> come into my heart, forgive me. It, it don't say that. It's telling you this is how God had designed salvation. That salvation had to do with what happens in the heart 
and it is evidenced by testimony of personal individual witness. And I think I think even the baptism is another testimony in itself, right? So, right. The baptism, the baptism is something that you do for God and man to show that you understand what salvation is about. Right. So, what is this one in verse ten saying? Romans ten ten. It says, "For with the heart man believes unto righteousness." There's the belief part that lines up with John three sixteen, and with the mouth. Somebody made a confession is made into salvation. Okay. What is that confession about? Okay. Okay. The question you should ask is, what does he have to confess? Well, well that's, I think what, that's the question you ought to be asking. Just in it line up with that, if you believe, he, matter of fact, Jesus said it too. Believe in the in in in, in, the, in the one who God sent is the works of God, right? Now, so it's, it's still a belief. The belief no. is the key principle here of salvation. Yeah, yeah, but belief is something that God works in your heart. Yeah, but belief, right. But now we're talking this so, so so it's the spirit of God taking the word of God and effecting faith in the heart that gives rise now that you can confess and testify that God has done something. But you know, it, but it's still saying is that the process, even Jesus went through a process, right? Because you know, Luke, when you when he went to the temple, what process? well, the one right here, you know what it said is he was made, first of all, it said he was made righteous. Uh, that's one scripture, but the one here is in Luke. You know, when he went to the temple. This, this verse you're looking at in Romans, it this verse is one piece. Huh? This, this, this verse we look at Romans chapter 10, that one piece. This all happened. This is all one happening. This is all one work of the spirit. This ain't six months apart. With, with the moment that that person believes, he's got a confession. He's got a confession. He confessed. But where's the part about him stop doing the things that are not acceptable, even, uh, even with the law? I mean, talking about from lying, fornication, jealousy, unforgiveness. I mean, you got a whole slew of people out there that got all these different issues. And you're saying, this is what I think you're saying is, then I say, okay, well, listen, let me ask you a question. So now you pull this text up. So I'll ask you this question since pull up. Where's repentance in here? It's not. Yes, it's, it is. When? In 10.10? Or 10 I? For the one I got to keep, my fact, that's another confession. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, there's a confession with the, about the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay. That's all that's saying. They ain't saying nothing about repentance. Oh, so, so, you, hold on. so you acknowledge then that this person is confessing that Jesus is Lord. Is Lord, right. Okay, now. So here in this text is clearly set before you the lordship of Jesus in this person's life. In their life, yes, sir. Okay. Now, who was Lord before? They, they, we always say it is that I'll just I'll say many churches are saying is we're moving Satan off the throne and we're moving ourselves off the throne. Okay. In case of people got oh, hold on. Let me let me just walk you through it. So if Jesus is now being confessed as Lord. Who was Lord before they confessed? I would say the person was the Lord themselves. So you see that in this text, the, there is the implication of a repentance and a turning away from the self-life as, as you being the Lord of your own life to the acknowledgement of the Lordship of Jesus. And with that new Lordship is that that person is going to go through the process. No, no, no. I'm trying to get you to see that therein lies the repentance. Yeah, okay. But the present point there is understand that when now you got a new lordship, just like a new administration, there's some changes going to happen in your life. And I'm saying those that things, those things all depends on what you know coming to Christ. It has everything to do with what you know about what God has already brought you to the place where you have a knowledge that, that your life is wrong, that, that the base that you're living out of is wrong, 
because the symptoms that you already have, right? So the symptoms of what he's, he's trying to get you to see that point to you're going to always get symptoms of this kind as long as you stay with the life that you have. He's asking you for a life change, not for a behavioral change. Uh, what we, we're, and, and we're talking about, uh, you said a life change or not a behavior change, because that's what we're talking about. The behavior is what the issues are. Like his being an alcoholic for six years is a behavior that, that he had to be delivered from. And I even, here's another scripture as I was showing him, Bishop, this Romans, we read this many times before, but I think for the audience sake, we here's a good example of why we ought to die daily. This right here, remember this one, Romans 7, for I was alive without the law once. When the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which were ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment is holy and just and good. This is Paul. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin working death in me that by which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For I know that the law is spiritual, but I am. And that's what we got in the body of Christ coming in. Now you rub your head. I am cardinal sold on the sin. Well, this whole text, this whole text is the, is simply telling you, if you if you read this thing through, yeah. we through this before, yeah. this whole text is telling you that this is a stage in Paul's life where he didn't know how that thing operated. But he, he also said he didn't understand how God had designed the thing to operate. Right. At the end of the text, he tells you he finally came to the life where he understood, and then he understood that you these things were supposed to work that way. And 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 at the same time, though, when he said in the there's no condemnation, the next verse, chapter, there is now no condemnation with them who walk in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. But what we have oh, is right there. Stop I know right I agree with you. Stop I agree. Right I, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Right yeah, that look, I'm with you. No, no, not right there. No motherfucker. Wait a minute. The the is, listen, he didn't say there is no condemnation. He said there's no condemnation to those who walk in Christ. This condemnation is conditional. It's conditional. He said there's therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but we got people uh that's in christ who walk after the flesh because they got some things they got to work on that's all i'm saying is we i think we go back to the uh, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on now see that's interesting now you just read that there is no condemnation to them in christ is who walk not after the flesh so my question to you is is that is there condemnation to those in Christ who do walk out the flesh? I think so, because it says right here, I'm going to read first read more. It says, who walked out of the flesh without the spirit? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free, made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh, God sent his son in the life of the sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be filled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they, connect that for they is, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, but it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you oh. are in the flesh, I'm not, I don't get you, I'm with you, but you are not in the flesh. He's telling the saints, the believers, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So the point is that anybody that operates in, that's born again, that made that confess, either there's are false converts or there are people struggling with the same thing Paul struggled with. No, this thing, this thing is very clear here, because he, 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 he makes sure you understand 
he does not ever let it drift out of your mind that he's talking to people who are not walking after the flesh. Right. He right. keeps that thing in front of you the whole time. Though he doesn't ever let that thing drift out of sight. Right. He keeps telling you who walk not after the flesh. Right. And we got people who come in the body of Christ. And we got people out there now. This, uh, this is Sunday. How many people do you believe in that in, in, in the churches in Warren Robins? Churches in the United States, churches in this world do not slip in and out of carnality and spirituality. Oh. Well, all I know is this. All I know is this. I was a fornicator before I got saved. I'm not drifting in and out of fornication. And you, right, do you have any other issue? Because Paul said die daily, right? I, Why would I, die daily? I don't want to before God. I got saved. I'm not drifting in and out of marijuana. Hey, hey, I got you. Me, me neither. But my point is that is, I hated white people. Hey, well, yeah, that's why unforgiveness, right? How many I people hated white people for all the unjust and the and the, and the racist things that they did to me? And every time that thing trying to slip back in now, the spirit of God comes to me and says, "Oh no, no, sir, not him." Right. You can you can watch George Floyd, but you better not let that, that thing cause nothing to rise up inside of you. Right. And I think isn't that you know, the what I do? When uh -huh. I'm watching that stuff and I said thing gonna go wrong, immediately I get out of my knees, I go to pray. Right. I no. I know this thing. I know you you can't if you said my man hated his brother, he's a liar, and the truth ain't in it. Exactly. And I, I think I'm up on my knees crying out to God to keep me from hatred so so keep me so so for the people that's listening to you how do they or a even elder six for six years how was he to get out of that situation listen listen elder and, and anybody else and all the people who are listening are going to have to go to the scriptures and they're going to have to let the Spirit of God let them see what actually happened to them. What I'm telling you is, is that, is that from what I have seen in Scripture and in people's lives, that where there was a knowledge that a thing was wrong, if they knew that it was wrong before they got saved, that when the Spirit of God brings conviction, that thing got brought, they got convicted about that thing. And that thing was dealt with right there and then. And how come it didn't happen with him? I'm just huh? he's a good example, that's all. He's an elder now. Were you elder then? <clears throat> okay. So yeah. he what was he then? Bishop for six years. I, 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 you can't you gotta ask him that. I don't know what he was in. You gotta ask, but see, that's the same thing any other person we've been ministering to is do we let them come in and and help them work with them and allow God to change them? Or we say it is you can't come in until you change. No, I don't know how the gospel was ministered to him. I don't know if they were offering him a solution to his problem or they were offering him a solution to his life. If they were offering him a solution to his problem, that ain't the gospel. And, and Elder, how long were you in the, the gospel? is not a solution to your problem. It's yeah, not a solution to your alcoholism. It's not a solution to your, your, your gay or lesbianism. That's not the gospel. Jesus isn't preaching the gospel for symptoms. Yeah, the symptom is that it points back to the need for the gospel, and we need to get away from the symptom and point people to the need. Right now, so was he so we at? Got, a, we need to use the symptom, but we don't need to make the symptom the problem. Exactly. The point is, so so when they come into the body of Christ, are we focusing on them getting the need, which is Christ? Right. I need Jesus. No, but you he, need a new life. That's in Jesus. Well, in Jesus, I need Jesus. He'll give me the new life. Right. He's the one to give the new life. What is elder? I mean, we, it's a good example. We got somebody sitting right in front of us, right? Right in front of us, right? What was elder? Well, how did you get saved? How did I get saved? Yeah, when did you get saved too? Now, 79. What, what was preached to you? The symptom or the problem? No, not the problem. Problem wasn't preaching me, and it was a problem. I mean, I was thinking about where, where was the problem because it was killing me. The solution was preaching me, and that was Christ. Okay. Okay. They so didn't, uh, but they didn't preach. Uh, Talk to us about the solution. How, to, how was the solution preached to you? I'll be honest with you. 
the earliest I can remember Christ being preached to me was Billy Graham when I was a kid. And I know that string kind of like ran through my life for a whole bunch of time. I was practicing Catholicism at the time. I was having problems with the alcohol. And you know, we always talked about Christ in the church, but the relationship between us and Christ in the corner of the script and some things that happened with the Catholic Church didn't exactly line up. So I don't know if that was the reason why it was more difficult to, to get delivered or not. But he was a solution to all our ills. Whatever you have issues with, Christ was a way to get resolved. It wasn't that he was preaching you a new life. It was just he was preaching you a better life. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, I heard that. That's what I've been saying. You know, I think that's how. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and I think that's how most, I can't say most, I don't know how other people really see it, but Christ to me initially was a priest to establish a new life, it's just to improve my own life. The life that I was living, I, I could get off of drugs, like get off of alcohol, stop running the streets, stop being crazy, and just live a better American dream life. And that's the kind of, that's kind of how I approached it when I first got saved. Because the stuff that I was doing was literally killing me. Because it was ruining everything I had. Um, lost, lost money, cars, jobs, all kind of stuff was just going out of drink. So that's what drove me into the presence of the Lord. And over a period of time, I turned all these things around. And he really did. He literally turned them all around. But uh, the servitude portion of it came much later. Just, you know, selling out, giving my life over to Christ. That came out the deliverance, really. And what about the repentance? Because that's what we're talking about. Is it either repentance? Yeah. That's a very interesting uh, thing. Because I tried to remember when I literally repented of myself. It was much later. The deliverance came before the repentance did. Um, I had been in the Christian for quite a while before I really looked upon myself and said, man, you got to go, <laughs> you know, you need some help. And uh, I remember I was in church and I started having these flashbacks about stuff I had done. So like, again, you know, I was going through some pretty rough times and I got and made some phone calls to people that I had done uh, in injustice to over the period of time that I wasn't saved or wasn't probably Christ. And I think that was one of the strongest convictions that came upon me that there was something wrong with me. Up until that, that point, I saw things that's happening against me or to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't see myself as a problem. I saw stuff happening in my life as being a problem. Yeah, and that's how, that's how I approached the Lord, you know, I, you know, help me with this. I can't handle this. And he was faithful, I mean, I guess, that's why I say it's kind of gonna be a probably a unique process for everybody in the things of it leading the Holy Ghost to disciple people because you got to know where they're thinking, where they come from, what their understanding of the word is, right. how they're really referencing every, every word you say, what are they really seeing and hearing. And uh, for me, I came to Christ because there was a need. Mm -hmm. And the need was to get me out of the mess I had to build for myself. Did you know why? I didn't even see that I had, I was a problem. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't see myself as being the problem until much later. Uh -huh. Uh, and I had been in, I probably was in ministry at the point when I really started to look back and determined that, you know, there was something was wrong with me. <laughs> and that I had really hurt a lot of people. Then I, I went back then and started repenting of, you know, stuff that I had done. But that was probably when I guess my true relationship with the Lord started to form. Up until that point, I don't know what he was thinking about what I was doing. Yeah. But I do know he helped me. I didn't know anybody else to go to. He dealt, he dealt with me where I was at. You know, he kind of came down to my level. He got a conversation going. He took me to the next level, and then his level. Yeah. And then that's when that's when we got him. I remember the first thing I'm always out there. The first time I ever realized my position in Christ was I got into one of those name to claim it kind of uh, ministries. And I laid my hands on this house, and somebody else bought it. <laughs> and I remember it up. Uh, yeah, somebody else bought the house. And I got mad because my uh, son was healing. He wouldn't get healed. The Lord would heal him. And then I went to the Lord with a, with a complaint. Very unpleasant. 
And he said, I don't work for you. You work Ooh. for me. 